Hello, you're listening to the Holistic Travel Nurse Podcast. Um, in this episode, I've gone from where I was talking a lot about weight loss and had some incredible stories of success and actually health success to having Julie back on. Thank you, Julie Reynolds, back on. Yeah. Aromatherapist, because um, it is March 17th, St. Patrick's Day, a day where everyone usually is out and about doing something amazingly fun or some kind of celebration. And we are all inside. And we, um, as nurses and as healthcare, a healthcare community, understand a little bit more what's going on than I think the average person. So we can give you some insights some ideas and hopefully support your emotions and your health and really want to talk about it is just vital important right now to self-care self-care governs your health and <clears throat> keeping an immune system strong not every person can there are people that are just um, more at risk and this is why everything that's happening is happening i bet you agree julie yeah. So first of all, just thanks for inviting me to this conversation um, because I love the work that you're doing. And I think this is real, it's really important for us to have these conversations um, and just bring some hope and light to, <laughs> to this situation. Yeah, I agree. I kind of think that I tend to think all things work together for good and we just really have an opportunity to respond and not react during this time of crisis really and that's kind of a skill that we that would serve us anytime not just during the times of crisis but um, in any circumstance and specifically now when we need to keep our stress levels low um, mm -hmm. that's just um, I guess one good question that I tend to I like to ask um, I think it's a good question to ask in times like this is what does this make possible so what can we learn and what can we be doing more of or doing less of to support our overall health and, um, and just so that we can have that healthy response in this time um, because there's so much we can't control, but we can control that. Absolutely, yeah. You and I could very easily be working a lot more than we want to be working. Um, in days to come. So what we can be doing and what we are doing as um, people on the front line to support our, our health and our immune system is what we should be sharing with the general population, especially those at high risk. I mean, I have family members. Um, I jumped down my dad's throat yesterday when I couldn't get a hold of him on the phone. I'm like, wait a second, you should be at home. You're almost <laughs> 70. And he's like, I went to the mountains with the dogs chill out. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, you're allowed to do that. <laughs> um, then, you know, also then, you know, I have a, a child also that has respiratory issues. So I'm like, okay, have you done this protocol every day? Cause I have a protocol for myself, for my health. And I believe this is when a self care model of protocol for your health every day is so important like this is vitally important in our health. And so how we take care of ourselves um, and what we eat and what we put in our body, what we put on our body and decreasing the amount of sugar because it's sugar is going to work on our stress too. Sugar can increase your stress. So decreasing our, our sugar and increasing um, some foods that are going to be nourishing to our bodies right now. I think those are just key, highly key. Right. I think has, those, go ahead. any of us who like ascribe to that wellness model versus if we've already kind of made that switch from away from the symptom and disease management uh, model into a wellness model. Um, if you spent any time incorporating that into your life, we already know the things that we should be doing. So we either do what we already just keep doing what we already do or we step it up and get more consistent with what we know to do. And yeah, exactly. Like eating right, moving more. I love that he was in the mountains, <laughs> taking a walk, doing exactly what he should have been doing. Um, yep. 
but that resting and managing stress, I think that's, I think stress is a big big thing right now. Um, I know that I've had to monitor my stress response in this time, but you mentioned decreasing toxins, like, but what in, on and around our bodies and just being pro proactive. So I have to admit that I've really been all over the place with this. I mean, I went, when it first started, I, you know, you're watching from afar and it's not really hitting you. You don't know the facts and what led to it. You don't actually know the circumstances. And then it comes a little closer, but you still can't see it. You don't, you, nothing personally has hit us um, at that point. And then you're, all of this, what seemed to be like, there's still people that think we're overreacting. And <laughs> so there's that. And then you start to think, well, maybe we are. I don't see anything happening. So, but then you start to like, just take in the facts. And I had to just get off media because my re stress response, I could feel that <laughs> I could start to perceive that I was getting more stressed than what served me. So I had to go and just go where what I do is like, I go listen to three hours of epidemiology podcasts and find out how I can, how I can learn to think about through this. So when I do hear the facts, I can filter them through that framework and that framework of science and what, how I'm going to respond. So, but, and it's going to be different for everyone. For some people, it's going to be just taking some deep breaths, um, applying some aromatherapy, going for a walk. So wherever that is, where that stress response starts to increase and you feel that, notice it, know that, that we're all in this together and then choose that, that thing that you need to do. Is it more information or less information? Is it going for a walk or is it taking mm -hmm. sunshine? You know, whatever that is, it's gonna be, look a little different for everyone, but it's really important that we all do that instead of, so I think it's easier to think more clearly when you're not so stressed. So when you let that stress response take over, that's when we start reacting to the stress, not necessarily the facts before us. So like I said, I've just been kind of all over the place with this to <laughs> then swing all the way back to, oh my goodness, we are, you know, this, I need, we need everyone to stay home and follow these guidelines when you start to really process what it is that's going on and what it is that um, the decision makers are seeing coming our way. So, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. I, I absolutely agree with all that because I, I'm supposed to be traveling. Like we talked before with this went live and I'm supposed to be on a plane in a couple of days. And so I've been kind of staying tuned because every single day there's something new and, um, so I don't, you know, I'm like, what's next? What's next? What's next? What are we going to be doing next? What are we going to be doing next? And then at the same token, how I had this humble heart of when I was in prayer, like, how can I, as me, it, it couldn't be just me. What if I can inspire others that we can do something more, especially as doTERRA wellness advocates and as nurses to educate and support the communities that are higher at risk. Something that maybe wasn't done before, like in Italy or whatever, what that's like this podcast, like this information, this is why I have scheduled zoom calls with whoever wants to come on. And I have a structured call and I had like 10 people the first time I did it Sunday night and people that didn't miss it reached out to me and said, can you do that again? And so there are people that are going, wait a second, I am, I'm lost. I don't know what to do with um, how to take care of my health. How do I support my, my elderly grandma? How do I support my parents that are um, 60s and 70s years old? How do I support my own health and that age? You know, we are not seeing it affect the children as much. We are seeing it affect a lot of um, our elderly population, those with immune compromise, those with respiratory issues. So how can we, like as a nation or as, um, as nurses or as healthcare professionals or wellness advocates or as kind humans support one another and do it virtually? And this is where it's yeah. going to be online and not coming together. Unless you do make a, um, Michael, unless you do make a um, care package and drop it off with someone and you are not susceptible and you have no side effects. I mean, 
this is a time where you should be doing that. Michael, Michael, sorry, my husband. Turn that down, please. <laughs> sorry for the background noise. He's, my husband's here and got a thing. But I really, I, I was sitting here making little packets of stuff um, thinking, and I reached out to my church. This is my idea. I reached out to my church in my area because I'm a travel nurse right now. And I said, Hey, I would like to support some senior citizens in the church. I'd like to give them a um, little packet of information about keeping their immune system strong. And if anybody else needs like them, you need somebody in your community to cook for them or make a drop off a dish or, or shop for them or something, I'm available. And that's one way you can do that. Like my dad was telling me his neighbor shopped for him. You know, if I was closer to my parents. I'm not close to my parents. I would have gone shopping for he for them. So those are one ways we can come together and really support each other. Yeah. Yeah. And I think too, like, do you, I don't know if you want to get into like what a virus is so that people understand yeah. a little bit about, you know, what I think it always helps me when I know the rationale of things that we're going to do. And I think, um, there's a little meme that is circulating around that says this is the year of the nurse. This is when they said this was the year of the nurse. I, and this was not what I had in mind. And I think, um, <laughs> and I, it's funny and you go, oh yeah, that's right. And, but then again, it's also a little bit of a call to those of us who have like I said, ascribe to that wellness model. And mm -hmm. nurses are positioned perfectly to be able to reach out into our communities and do these things that you said and to teach people you can do these things, but also to help people understand that, um, that a virus, we were talking about this be uh, before we got on here, is that a virus is not like a bacteria or a fungus in that it's not really considered that organism and we don't have a treatment for it and nurses don't treat um we we don't we don't treat disease and we don't we don't prescribe medications um, but what we can teach is wellness um, so viruses are classified actually as a as a microbe and doesn't they don't really have that life cycle like like maybe an, uh, in a bacterial that we coexist with all the time mm -hmm. and we have those um, have, it has those have their own way of replicating and viruses have this life where we get exposed to them and then those proteins that you see coronavirus actually has those little crowns which mm -hmm. is where it gets its name mm -hmm. um, but those proteins on the surface are like homing devices that are just looking for the host cells and so our scientists and our epidemiologists are trying to identify what host cells is this virus specifically looking for and how can we cut that short and this is what tells us what symptoms we're going to have. And I, I share all that not to be complicated about it, but these, these uh, viruses have to find that host cell and then they have to inject their DNA into that host cell in order to replicate the host cell bursts and then we have that replication once that happens that's when we start to get the symptoms so there's a whole process that a virus even once you're exposed to it say you breathe it in and it's in your nose or in your throat um, i've heard some epidemiologists say you know stay hydrated so your your mouth and your throat are are moist so that you're more likely to swallow it than breathe it into your lungs so I don't know how much you, again, things you can't control, but to me, to be able to understand that there is a process here that viruses go through in order to wreak havoc on our systems. And that to me elevates that value of prevention. So what, all the things that we are talking about with the, what we put in and on and around our bodies. And again, we don't have a whole lot of control over the virus and does it make it to the host cell? But what we can do is those things, like you said, we can cut back on the sugar, we can reduce our stress because when we're on our stress levels, we also get that inflammatory response from stress. So mm -hmm. all of those things um, can help to, in the early stages of that virus exposure, even to keep us from getting symptomatic and possibly allowing that virus to take hold. So there are a lot of things, I mean, especially if you want to talk about um, 
can we talk about essential oils being part of that? Oh yeah. Yes. So, oh yeah. So even if we, you know, we've got lots of literature that, um, that shows us that in the, in, in the lab anyway, we've got one eight They tested one eight with antiviral medications and found that they were more effective together than apart. So we have oils that, um, rosemary, laurel leaf. We've got some oils that can help prevent that process from ever taking place. Again, we don't use oils to diagnose or treat, um, and that's not what I'm saying, but adding that in with good nutrition, just like we would with vitamin C, high doses mm -hmm. of vitamin C, vitamin D, all of those mm -hmm. things. Um, but uh, germachrome is another thing that they've tested, and that's in our turmeric. Um, when combined, we had very significant results. But there's so many things that um, that we, so many oils that are is, are listed in the literature as being very preventative and supporting our healthy immune system. And that's really what we need to do right now, especially while we're social distancing. If you haven't been exposed, or if even if you have we just talked about the life of the virus. So, um, but all of those stages, if you're not symptomatic, especially these are things to, that you could um, add in there as measures mm -hmm. of preventative, um, but in supporting that healthy immune system. So Melissa is a great essential oil. Um, you might have a favorite one, but i lime is really great. And that's something a lot of people have lime, lemongrass. Wild orange. Um, marjoram, black pepper, copaiba, cinnamon, eucalyptus, and of course we have oregano and thyme, which honestly thyme is in all of my diffuser blends right now. <laughs> There's a drop of thyme with wild orange, a drop of thyme with, I've got citrus, a citrus blend in, in my diffuser now that has, and then I've got a drop of thyme in there with it. So, um, oh so yeah, when you look at the chemical constituents of what's in thyme, you're like, oh, this needs to be in more protocols. Absolutely needs yeah. to be in more protocols. Yeah. yeah, and it's highly, it's very much studied. So you could even just go to PubMed and check out all of the studies, the different ways that um, scientists and are looking at the activity of, of time and the effectiveness. Um, there. Absolutely. So, yeah, so all of those things that we can be doing to support a healthy immune system. Um, and I keep going back to stress because I really think it's key. That's something that all of us understand. And it makes such a big difference that mind-body connection is a very real thing. So what are we focusing on? Um, because that's... Do you want to hear something funny? Yeah. We, we need humor in, in this. So yesterday in my scrubs, um, they thought I was just chubbier just because I had so many oils in my pocket. <laughs> They're like, what is, what are you carrying in all of your pockets? I'm like, oh, let's just pull all this out right here. I got my hand sanitizer. I need, I need, I need some steady for my mind. Let, let, let me give you some adaptive here. You know, I. Just, That's actually awesome that somebody's like, what? I had a, I had a, like one of my approved sweatshirts on and it has a front pocket. And they're like, what do you have all in your little kangaroo pouch there? I've got my on guard, my, my hand sanitizer. I got my stronger roll on. <laughs> I'm like, this is just my supply. I don't know about you, but this is not for me. So that that's, was just was pretty funny. And I got to share it with uh, a few nurses who knew nothing about oils yesterday and are very interested now. Yeah. And we had an incredible mood and atmosphere that was non-stressful in an, an ICU. So, which is just so what we need right now. I literally, I was telling my dad, I was like, can I drop out? I mean, I was like, can we drop off a diffuser and some oils? Cause I have a grandma who's 94 in the nursing home. He's like, it's, it's a no zone. You can't do anything there. And I'm like, I just want to give her a rollerball. And my dad's like, she's going to lose it like her hearing aids. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but um there's like, another thing about our essential diffuser. oils is we're not going to run out of them so. true we have um, matter of fact actually one of my um healthcare professionals 
told me, you better be careful about medications right now because a lot of them come from China. I was like, oh, don't even tell me this. I'm like, I don't want more bad news. <laughs> so people that need life-saving or certain medications, I'm like, oh, don't. She's like, we're going to run out of that. And I'm like, well, don't give me anything more right now. I'm like, oh, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. And but that I've, also I've, is like another thing about the whole, our response to it is that, yeah, I left work yesterday with a very heavy heart over mm -hmm. our preparedness <laughs> and, or lack thereof. Um, and it, I just, we can't control that. We can control our response to that. And, and that, you know, we're talking about the self-care and how we care for our, our bodies and our minds. And I think too, with the social distancing, if, if, you know, for someone who's out there, who's still going, is this overreacting? We're, you know, I might lose my job over this. I mean, there's a lot of people worried about that right now and um, legitimately. So um, with the social distancing, I, I, talked to my family today and I, I shared just every time we make a decision to go out or have a gathering or take a risk like that, we possibly could be in promoting like somebody else is going to have to make a decision between two other people who are, who's going to live and who's going to die, who's going to get the support that they need and who, who can't. And triaging like that is so much um, it's serious. Yeah, you. I, I had um, that as a certification. I, I got when I thought I was going to do ER. So that's the trauma certification. And that everyone who has a nurse who has that trauma certification, um, and that's what's happened in Italy. They've not talked about that where they have decided who's going to live and who's going to die, who they can think yeah. will live and who they can take care of and who they can't. And yes, as a nurse, that 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 freaks me out. Because it was actually the nurses that have that certification that make that judgment. Right. Um, and those triage decisions aren't anything that anybody wants to be in the no. position to make. But I would say that with the social distancing, everybody's in the position to make it. It's not just nurses and doctors. Every time that you decide whether you're going to gather or not, every time you decide where you're going to go, and what you're going to do, if you're going to take these things seriously or not, observe them or not, you're making a decision. And I don't want to be all heavy about that, but if you think about, you know, it's sometimes when you can't see the result of your decision, it's a little bit, it's easier to just go, oh, this won't hurt anything. Oh uh, yeah. I didn't, I didn't go anywhere today. I was going to go to yoga and I, I decided not to, I wanted to go to yoga class. Um, and so I feel that, that same way I have mask. I had the N95, which I'm like, do I say that I actually brought the M95 mask home all before this happened? I brought it accidentally home. So it's like mine and I'm going to put my name on it. <laughs> but I know, I mean, literally that was the news today where he's like, Hey, if the uh, workers could give the hospitals more N95 masks. And I'm like, are you kidding me? That's, are you kidding me? That we're asking construction workers to give us their extra masks for our hospital care system. I'm like, oh Lord, people this don't. Is, but this <clears throat> is honestly, this has been the hardest thing for me. Yeah, is that how in the world did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. I'm like, how do we get where we don't have a stockpile somehow? Yeah. And that was what actually I, epidemiologists have also been calling for a stockpile of masks and it wasn't seen as a priority. So we don't have them now. Again, that's all hindsight and we can, you know, we can criticize and, and I do, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not, um, I can't say that I'm perfect with this mindset, but just really being intentional to pull it back. So and that would be the other thing that in this time, it is not possible to be all sunshine and roses mm -hmm. all the time. We are going to go through a whole myriad of thoughts, emotions. responses, and emotions to this. And one day is going to be totally different. And then as soon as somebody personally affected to you, it changes just yeah. as, just as fast as a virus changes. Um, I cried yesterday. I had a friend of ours in the wellness community 
um, messaged me and told me she's in the ambulance on the way to the ER, uh, attempts 100 and 104, and she passed out because her blood pressure was low and she might have the virus. And it was that like hit home when you have a friend, even though they're in another state or wherever they're at and they message you and like, could you pray? Yeah. And um, it was like, oh, on the heart. And, yeah. and then we're going to have like swings where we feel a little more optimistic about the way it's going and we got this and then pretty soon, you know, and it is just because the news just keeps coming and, <laughs> you know, this person loses their job. I mean, it might, it's not all even health related. It's, you know, um, I know that um, my son was dealing with losing his job and you know, just like you're, all, we're all over the place. So we're going to have those thoughts. And I guess that's where also a mindfulness practice comes in to just notice it. I feel this way and it sucks, <laughs> but I can take this thought captive mm -hmm. and how am I going to respond to it? How is it going to serve me? And all of those things are things that we need to be, you know, write them down where we can see these questions and manage it because it's just that important to manage our stress levels as well. So even mm. from a practical standpoint, so to well, have the thought, I think that, notice it, well, well, don't judge it. You're not bad. Yep. You're not bad. You're not a worry wart. You're not cynical. Like don't stop with the labeling of, of all of that. It's just, you had a thought, you had a concern that probably yep. millions of others are having at the same time or will have, you notice it and then just take it captive and turn it into something that serves you a little better. And maybe it's gonna serve you by making you take action. Like you said, to take somebody, you know, some groceries or that use that anger or the frustration or the worry to propel you to do something positive that's going to serve you and others better. Oh, I agree, but I also think we can use our oils for our emotions every day Absolutely. and have an emotional, <laughs> and have an emotional protocol. I mean, if I didn't have them, for my emotions, it would just be like, I'd be like one hormonal hot mess. Cause I'm all like pre-menopause. And so I'm like, ah! and so I'm like, I can might douse myself more than what I should just because I want them for my emotional support. And so they're, they're so supportive for our emotions and they're so supported that, and it's okay to have anger and to let your body have that anger emotion and you know, do something with it. If you can get outside and go for a walk, if you're angry at whatever is going on, or if you're sad, it's okay to have that sad emotion and we can pick up an oil and not have it cheer us, but we can have it console us and help us console ourselves. The console yeah. blend. Um, we can do those things. We can, we can put some things on our wrists or breathe them in to keep our, it, to keep our stress levels more important than anything else because an increased stress and maybe that's why the media is not explaining as much as we want scientifically as nurses or physicians or anybody in healthcare we're like oh wait a second you're just not giving even us enough data um because they were like we don't want to freak you out <laughs> yeah so well yeah or they don't want to give us data that's going to change tomorrow <laughs> till they know it because we are going to jump all over them if they're wrong. What is your favorite um, emotional blend support blend right now? So steady uh -huh. and the whole adaptive line because you can yeah. have the adaptive supplement also. Yeah. And I take that at night and though that increases GABA that works in your brain. There's so much science with that. And yeah. so uh, I love that. I even do St. John's wart, but not everyone can do St. John's wart um, because it interacts with medications, a lot of medications. Mm -hmm. I've seen but. so many helped by the adaptive blend. Um, so it's always one that I recommend first. I think I use, I use a lot of forgive, especially in the workplace. <laughs> you mentioned console. I don't use as much as that, but forgive. Um, I would say the flowers are right now what I'm particularly like the, um, I like to, so I have to wear a mask because I, I have to, because I don't get the flu vaccine. Um, and so I wear a mask every day anyway, which I think they're probably going to take me, my mask away from me. <laughs> they shirt. told me that was my mask for the day. 
That's what so, happened. Yeah, the other day. we can have one. <laughs> yes. And so I decided I have some there and I, I, I wondered if I should get the markers and decorate my mask and I'll bring it back to work. Mine's going to be the smelly, the smelly oily one too. So it'll be my mask. Oh, I love that. Um, yeah. Your ma my mask smells like magnolia or jasmine. <laughs> So. You know, kind of like the OR, ha they have those things that go over their masks. They make those little cute ones that they have, and they have the cute little hats, all the OR nurse and all the, I'm uh -huh. like, you know, because they have the cute little, um, I don't even know what you call it, that goes over their head. And uh -huh. they, they will make their cute little own little masks. I'm like, actually, that's a great entrepreneur job, people. Make some cute little masks for us nurses. <laughs> oh, Yeah. <laughs> I think <laughs> <laughs> but they were like, really, we can take our style up to a whole new level at work by the So what does this wearing. make possible? Those of you who are have a little craftiness in you, <laughs> make some masks, get them out there. <laughs> that is a fabulous. I just thought of that. I mean, well, I love that joke <clears throat> and I will post the funnier things on my, and also my Facebook because I need that sense of humor. And my husband will always, I mean, the toilet paper thing is just it's been ridiculous, but at the same time, it has been a big anxiety because my, my mom had my brother over and his wife and the, she's like, I had to give him toilet paper because she goes, er er Erica was really anxious about running out of toilet paper. It was, it was a severe anxiety, you know, and especially yeah. as females compared to the male, they don't understand that I'm like, we want our toilet paper. <laughs> the toilet paper thing made no sense to me all the way up to the point where the grocery stores were going to close. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. But, <laughs> yes. That, yes. That's still baffling me. What would um, I don't know. I don't add the paper for. Well, no. I can tell you one thing. Nobody's going to be teeping anybody's house with it right now. So <laughs> <laughs> there's none of that going to be happening because people are going to go over that house and clean it up to take yeah. their stock. I don't know. That one is I, still baffling me a little bit. I don't even understand it at all what, whatsoever. Um, but I saw it here. And the paper towels make more sense because you want to clean the house and you want to make your own household cleaners. And so the paper towels make sense. Um, but the toilet paper does not make sense. So I was, think we can all agree we're ending this it does not on a very us. good high note when we have to talk about toilet paper and making sense, you know, <laughs> and, and I mean, toilet paper can be the new currency in some areas where people are really desperate. I mean, people post on Facebook, could you please share some toilet paper with me? And like, oh my gosh, could yeah. some neighbor please give them some toilet paper? Quit being a hoarder <laughs> yeah. of toilet yeah. paper. Um. And so I reached out to more of my friends and one of my questions was I wanted to leave things at a nice note. I mean, I did ask her, I asked one of friend I haven't talked to in a long time. I'm like, how is it going there? There's another fellow nurse. And, and I'm like, okay, but the big question is, and she's like, what? And I'm like, do you have toilet paper? <laughs> <laughs> she's like, yes. <laughs> I mean, so. Yeah. And, so, so anyways, let's go down in was... history as the great toilet paper crisis. Okay. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> So, okay, now we're going to get ourselves into trouble for making light of a difficult situation. I know, because people are going to go, wait a second, I am so low on toilet paper, you have no idea. And I'm like, get creative. You know, when you go through the drive through ask for a lot of napkins. <laughs> well, I, had, I saw somebody posting like little bag, Ziploc bags of Liebs organic to and marking it organic toilet paper. <laughs> so. <laughs> Don't let it not be poison oak or poison ivy. We're going to have a oh, whole dear. other problem. Oh <laughs> dear. It and wipes that somewhere. I could just see that. Oh, it was really pretty shaped. If you've ever seen poison oak, it's actually really pretty. You're like, oh, it's really pretty. I'm like, why does something so nasty to us cause nastiness to us? It can be so pretty, but some yeah. things. So it's a cactus until you fall into the cactus bush. So, <laughs> but yeah. I appreciate your phone, um, you jumping on. I wanted someone to just, you know, give us some light and encouragement and some education and Hey, let's support each other. Nurses stand up. Wellness advocates stand up. You have people in your life, even online that you can impact more and you can educate and you can support. Absolutely. We're all in this together. Yep. And think about that when you're going out. You might need a mask. You might need some gloves. Or if you do, um, I'm sorry, they're not going to be 
hopefully they'll be in stock soon, but be creative, get creative and make me a mask and send it to me of what you're putting on your face. <laughs> Please not underwear. <laughs> Please no underwear. <laughs> <laughs> making a mask. <laughs> oh, that'll be. So we cool. do need to be right. clear that masks right now are not something that those are masks are more to protect other people from getting sick from you. Yep. Right. So yes. 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 Especially oh, it, if it, you have not been trained to wear a mask and how to care for it. Yeah. It's probably not going to serve you the way you would hope it was going to yeah yeah exactly and and it's not and if you're in quarantine you shouldn't be going out with a mask period you should be staying in if you're quarantined and you've been tested positive or you have signs and symptoms of anything you should be in right in your house messaging people to bring you stuff drop it off so you'll be better than amazon so thank you so much julie for this conversation it's my pleasure it's good it's always good talking to you about these things and um and thanks for yeah like i said just thanks for bringing me into the conversation and um, i think it is important for us to get the message out that we're all in this together and there is information there are things we can do um mm -hmm. and then our response is that's all we have is controlling our response so much and our we yep, our own emotions our own um self-care practices and oil up now <laughs> yep yeah